everybody, thanks for tuning back in. Um, my name's Josh, I'm with Worldwide Corals, and we recently did a video on my tank a few months back, and we thought it's time to, to do an update, even though I don't think it's really ready. So about a few weeks ago, we did a, a, an install down in Marathon Key, and while I was gone, I made a couple rookie mistakes. One, I switched from All for Reef to Bionic, which while it was a good choice, it wasn't thought through very well. Um, two, I didn't have anybody to oversee my tank while I was gone, which was a big problem. Um, and the elk ended up down to 4.6. So obviously that sounds like huge dramatic mess, but it really wasn't because it was stably going down. Um, I generally keep my tank anywhere between six and seven DKH, which is still pretty, pretty low. <laughs> But at that point, it had been going down for a week or so, and you know, 4.6 is critical. So that's not when things died. Um, things started to die when I started going from 4.6 to 5.3, from 5.3 to 5.9, and then obviously, you know, the, the rest is in the books. So it wasn't catastrophic. I lost probably seven or eight pieces that I cared for quite a lot, and I know better. I just didn't go the right route. I don't have any fail safes in place. My tank is just standby. Simple calc washer and water changes and feeding. I mean, and that's the other thing too. I was gone for almost a week and my tank got fed, but it didn't get fed the way it normally does. So it's a combination of all things put together. Alkalinity is one of those things where, you know, we shoot for that rock solid stable number and there really is no magic bullet, you know, no, no silver bullet. So it doesn't matter if you keep it at seven, doesn't matter if you keep it at eight, doesn't matter if you keep it at nine, it's all doable. But it's the differences between the two. You know, sometimes you go from seven to nine, some things don't like it. You go from 10 to six, things definitely aren't gonna like it. Um, so our goal is to try to keep that, that really neutral playing field. And that's what I didn't do in this case. The, the corals that were most affected, obviously, it's, it's mostly stonies in this tank. Uh, Montes turned really, really dark and ugly. My chalices started to recede a little bit. A few of my really prized mushrooms actually let go, and luckily they've, they've landed since. Um, I think they're gonna make it. The few things that, that did actually substantially well when I thought that they would die would have been the Homewrecker and the Walt Disney. Funny enough, they seem to be unfazed. Thank, thank God. As you can see, I've added in the past, I think three weeks, I added the two clowns. I just needed a little bit more movement in the tank. These clowns, I guess they would call them storms. Um, maybe an extreme storm of some variation, but I like them because if you look at their tail and their pectoral fins, they match perfectly. They've got a bright orange center, a black ring around it, and then a white outlining. And it was cool because both of them had the exact same pattern. So what's doing the best right now? I would say out of all the corals in the tank right now, these St. Thomas mushrooms are looking outstanding. Um, I've never really been huge into St. Thomas, but when you get a huge batch of them in and you can hand pick a few out of them they, and you put them together, you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, all clustered together and I actually had them laid out one, two, three, four, five like this and they walked over into the corner. On the back side over here I have one of those um, cornbread flame mushrooms which is another St. Thomas and it looks incredible. The Montes have gone out of control obviously Montes grow really fast and I've got these two here the Acro and then the, the Juggernaut which are kind of getting crowded a little bit I'm gonna have to move them. The Walt Disney is doing really, really good. The Ultimate Stag, I love the shape. It's probably my favorite coral in this tank when you're standing from across the room because whether it's under white light or blue light, you see the bright yellow tips and the super pearly blue branch. There's another coral that we have yet to sell much of um, is this Monty right here. We call it Quicksand. And honestly, it changed my mind First, I didn't like it, it was kind of brown. It had a little bit of like this black polyp 
and then the black polyp developed into blue and then the rim turned hot pink and then the tops of all these little nodules are turning like this pearlescent green so it's definitely turned into a really really nice monty overall no changes to the filtration i still on and off use filter pad um, i still use calcwasser as a primary source of alkalinity and my top off still just an ugly simple bucket underneath the tank um it's been turned up a little bit i'm at 2.1 mils um, per minute now the air conditioning runs a lot more this time of year and it's been brutally hot outside so that's you know evaporative cooling and it's also taking that the water out of the tank so it goes through a little bit more ro this time of year but i'd like to spend a little bit of time talking about the lights because in the last video we had a lot of comments about how the lighting was applied and I've shared the profile a couple times with different people and they've had a hard time with it. Um, so I guess the point of that, the discussion would be to talk about why I do what I do when I build a custom template, because it's not for every tank. You can't just, you know, there's not one shoe that fits every person. It's never one size fits all. So we'll go over a couple of things that, that I do to tailor fit to the environment. When I build a custom template, I think about a couple of things. I think about the size of the tank, how many lights and what lights are over the aquarium, and then what type of corals are in the tank. And to generalize things as simple as I can, there's Acropora and then there's everything else. So there's two categories. Everything else meaning it's gonna be lower to low light. If it's Acropora, it's always gonna be high to extremely high. And when I say high, I mean, I don't know, call it 200 par and up. Um, whereas everything else is gonna be 200 par and down. Um, there's always gonna be exceptions, right? But I'm trying to generalize everything from low light acros to high light acros, from low light leptos or mushrooms to high light euphilia, right? But again, the, the very generalized basic answer is 200 and down and 200 and up. When I'm building the profile, I also think about how much white and how much blue. So if, I, if you look at my, my screen here, this is going to be how I build most of the profiles where I've got this really high peak here between the two points and then I've got the two lower peaks. And what that means to me is go back to metal halide or T5 days. This represents when my, my metal halides are on and this represents when they're off. So if you look at the tank right now and I click on this plot, that is my full spectrum and you'll see on the screen here that I've got cool white at 30, I've got warm white at 10, and I've got the green on at the same time. The reason why I do that is a personal preference. I don't like the look of the green, I don't like the look of the red, and I don't like the look of the warm white. However, the cool white is this really nice crisp and clean white, so it gives you that almost blue white look to it. Kind of like when you put a, a warm white bulb in your room, it looks really yellow. So I try to avoid that. But going back to the point, during this higher light period, I'm running the greens and the whites together because if I run the green with the blue, it muddies the color of the blue. If I run the white with the blue, it muddies the color of the blue. If you use the Ecotech template called AB+, you're gonna see there's this rise and fall of the 20k spectrum which is excellent for people who like to view during white however me personally i like to view it from this plot on throughout the course of the day because i really like that like old school reef bright look or the just really rich blue because personally i enjoy the blue it doesn't mean that it's right or it's wrong but i will say that if you look at the template, the template here shows I'm on at 7.30, or starting my day at 7.30. In the end of my morning peak is 12.45. I'm giving a five hour window of full spectrum. 
That's only because I worked to that point. When I did started this, I started at one hour and I worked my way to two hours and then I worked my way to three hours. And the reason why I did that is because not every coral likes that really white, abrasive, bright light. So everything I do is in increments. So by doing it this way, I'm picking the spectrum that I like of white and I'm picking the spectrum that I like of the blue. And then I'm finding how much time that I need to run the white by giving it an hour at a time. And I'll wait two or three weeks because they have to adjust. You know, like I'll give you an example. If you look at this Master Bauer Banky at the bottom, it's just a little on the light side. And I'll tell you, I made a 10% change to the lights. I, I added here 10% where I was at 20, now I'm at 30. And I feel like that coral, either I need to move it or I need to move the lights down some. And I'm leaning more toward bringing the lights down 10% because a lot of the corals are a little bit lighter than they were last week. So the blue, you know, I kind of, I put this into perspective. If you work out every single day, super hard, like at the peak of your capacity and you never give your time rest or you never give your body rest, it's the same with these corals. They can't handle that bright white light all day long, every day. And maybe that's part of the problem. Maybe you're growing a bunch of algae. Maybe you've got cyano. Maybe you can't keep your glass clean and it bothers you, but your nitrates and your phosphates are low. You know, all of this is expedited by having a ton of photosynthetic energy. We do that all around the shop here. We always have anywhere between a three and a five hour photo period during white, not really, really bright. And then we have the brightest blue we can give for the longest period of time after that, because we enjoy that. And we feel that it gives the coral the time to take a break. So if you were to play If you were to play the time lapse, it's gonna jump from off straight to on, just like back in the day with the halides. So there's not much of a ramp. And then it goes from the white straight down to the blue. And then it's like that for the rest of the day. And I've played around with doing different colors of, or different percentages of violet, different percentages of UV. And I personally don't feel like there's that much of an impact either other way. Um, I like the look of this, so I'm sticking with it. And that's what works for me here. If I was to build a new template for this tank, let me do this first. I'll save it. So I'm going to save this template. Today is August 21st. So that's a 21 Josh's tank. So let's say that I delete this whole entire thing. Now I have nothing, starting from a blank slate. Let's say that I have a tank full of euphilia and zoanthids and call it acans. And I really wanted something that's gonna give me a good photo period of white and it's going to give me a really nice blue that I can enjoy for the majority of the day. I'm gonna do the same thing, but this is how I would do it. I'm gonna add a plot. Okay. And then I'm gonna add another plot. So let's say this is my start time, just like I have now. I'm gonna to go to the first time. I'm going to do the same thing, except for I don't have the ability to give it as much light as I do in this acro tank. So I'm going to leave the point intensity at 100. I'm sorry. Let's go back. I'm going to leave the schedule intensity at 100. Why? I'll explain that in a moment. It changes everything else if you do. So I go here and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna change my point intensity down to 55%. This is my starting point. If I was to do it on this tank again, and it was only LPS, I'm gonna start my start point at 55%. And I love the blue, okay? And I like the violet and I like the UV. Looks amazing, just like that. Now, again, the way that I do things, 
I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna give, call it 10% on the warm white and 20% on the cool white. I do like some of the red with the LPS because it does accent the color in the coral better. And then I'm gonna match this to my cool white just because I appreciate this color. So then I'm gonna duplicate the same exact thing on the next plot. But do you see, I only kept the point intensity at 55%. Now my next one, I'm only gonna run that for a little time. And we'll do the same exact thing. 100, 100, 100, 100, 20, Ten. I think I did five, right? And Twenty. And then I changed the point intensity back down fifty-five percent. Okay, so my plot looks goofy. So what I have to do is I have to add another one because I have to transition from the white photo spec photo period down to the blue. So now, I've got the same 100, except for I'm gonna drop these four off. This is where I would play with the most. So most likely on the ending plot of my white photo period, I might keep it a little bit shorter and then here, I would go higher. Maybe I go to 60 or I go to 65%. Most likely I would try to start at 60 because I don't know how things are gonna react. Okay. And what does that look like? You see how it kind of scoots down now? And then I'll duplicate the same thing again. 60 and then all blue. Okay, this is right towards the end of my day, so I'm gonna drag it right to the end. And then there's a short ramp here, and I think this is pretty short too. 15 minute ramps, both ways. So before, before I would increase my white photo period, believe it or not, my next step, let's say in a month, if my tank looks really good, but I feel like it can use a little bit more light, my next step would be to actually take the first blue and go up, maybe to 70. And this may even be too much too. But if you look at it, it's backwards from my acro setup. To me, and I don't know how true this is or not, but to me, I've never been able to run this really heavy white photo period very high. It's almost like the corals, the way that I keep them, they can't handle it. But if I turn the blue up, they can. I don't know if it's more harsh. I don't know if it's just that much more phot photosynthetic radiation or if it's just the spectrum that they can't handle. I don't know. I don't know enough about lights to understand it. But when I build a spectrum, I do this. I run a lower white and a higher blue. So it's either gonna look like this or it's gonna look like my other schedule. But try more blue. Once in a while, you'd be surprised. I really think, I really think that people would, if you like the look of the blue, I think that you would be impressed in how little algae grows and how well the corals can handle that much more light when it's blue versus when it's white. And don't be afraid to keep the white photo period short too. You can scale it down to three or four hours and it's not gonna harm anything. 
you know, a lot of times we'll go to a service client's house. They've got algae all over the place. They struggle with the tank. The corals look amazing, but it's white all day long, every day. And it's in a room full of natural light. And just by scaling down the white sum or shortening the photo period, it's pretty impactful how much less algae will actually grow. And I mean, not for nothing, but you can see here in this format, I think in my in the last one that I just deleted to, to show you how to build this schedule, you can see I only run 20% white, which is really not that much. So it's worth a shot. Look, for anybody that wants to try something new, just start low and work your way up and, and wait two or three weeks at a time before you make another change. But really key in on the fact that if you know what your corals are looking like at their worst and you know what your corals are looking like at their best, you know when things aren't right. So either turn it down or just wait longer and see if it'll adjust. So I don't know, hopefully that's helpful. I get a lot of questions about light and you'd be surprised how often we'll make a change to suit the tank, you know? Sometimes the calcium reactor will go wonky and the corals will get stressed out. We'll turn the lights down some. You know, maybe, maybe we're treating with some sort of medication or whatever, we'll turn the lights down. But again, they have to go back up slow. They can go down quick, but they gotta go back up slow. If you ever wanna share or save or whatever, I don't know how many people really know Mobius well, but saving a template is easy. Literally just hit that little thing over there on the side and we'll call it the trial template. I'll go put it on a tank just to prove a point. And then I go back to my other one. So in order to upload it, let's let's say, let's say you wanted to use a template that we have on our website. You go to our to the bottom of our page, there's a there's a quick link that says uh, lighting templates. You can go to the lighting templates, you download the file, you go to devices. Lighting, templates. Once it's downloaded, these are the preset templates that Ecotech will provide you, but then go to user. Whatever device that you just downloaded the, the profile onto, generally it'd be right at the bottom. This is the one that I just deleted. So now I'm gonna go back to my regular schedule. It's gonna show you a picture of the graph. You hit activate, bam, right back to normal. So now, it looks like my first template. Well, there wasn't much to make an update out of. It's still the same tank. It's still most of the same corals. They've only grown a little bit. Um, I think they look good. It might be worth some good eye candy, hopefully. And maybe there's a thing or two you can pick out of the lighting thing that I just talked about, because I definitely feel like that's useful in a lot of different scenarios. So I guess that's it for now. Um, don't forget, like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Leave a comment in the section below so that we know what to talk about on the next one. And I'd love to be able to provide you with any kind of info in the future, but I got to know what you guys are looking for. So thanks for coming to our channel. Don't forget to get your tickets. Reef of Palooza in Texas is coming October 7th and 8th. Ryan from Bulk Reef Supply and myself will be speaking at 1230 both Saturday and Sunday. Make sure you come check it out. It's my first time ever. I'm kind of nervous and kind of excited about it at the same time. So get your tickets, get your hotel rooms, and see you there.